usually for a fantasy book to make it into the top best category, it needs to be massive. And yes, we're talking about page count. Take Malassan Book of the Fallen or Stormlight Archive, Name of the Wind, Game of Thrones, all of those books, even if are amazing, are usually pretty big and suppose a big commitment. So today I figured let's do what appears to be the impossible and bring 10 fantasy books that are incredibly short but that are also pretty amazing. Starting with no other than The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is a story that will blend magic with the childish memories, with the day-to-day -day situations. And it is a weird read, but it's full of nostalgia. And it's the kind of book that, depending on the reader, each of us will bring something different to the table. It is very magical. And I believe the Gaiman did something truly special. It's a story that it's sometimes sad. At times, it's really uplifting. It packs an emotion punch and it's at the end of the day a story that will follow our main guy who is coming back home due to funeral and a lot of memories from when he was a child will emerge and he will start to challenge if those memories were true were false and everything that's around it therefore we will have these two different settings once when he is in the past when he was a child and now his adult version it really has this peter pan magic and i absolutely adored it and let's continue with favorite authors in this case with Brandon Sanderson and The Soul of the Emperor. This is probably the shortest book that I have in this list and you cannot believe how incredible it is. In a little bit less than 200 pages, Sanderson was able to create a story that has an incredible main character that is very well crafted with very unique magic systems. In this case, we will see two. One of these is a little bit of a merge between the art and magic because our main girl Shai will be tasked with the mission of crafting anew the soul of the Emperor after an assassination attempt and even if she wasn't really keen to do that she will find herself in that situation and she will be drawn in all of the politics that are involved it explores very interesting themes around identity around immortality and how powers can change a person I really really enjoyed it it packs a punch to the heart and overall I think it's very well done. Also, if you were wondering if you would enjoy Sanderson, I really believe this is a great start because the hat magic systems that we will see here are kind of like his trademark. All right, and we continue with a favorite read with a Piranesi by Susanna Clark. And this is the book that against all odds is within my favorite list. It is hunting, it is mysterious. This is going to be a very beautiful, naive, but also again, hunting experience. We will follow Piranesi, who is the cutest character, and he will try to understand and to record everything that happens in his life, where he lives in this massive house, which is almost as big as the world, and he will try to record everything that happens and why it is happening with the help of someone that he just sees every now and then something happens and the twists and turns are fantastic everything is pretty mind-blowing and it has a very unique writing style where Piranesi will use the scientific method to explore life this appears big but just because the letters are massive and we continue with another favorite author in this case it's V. Schwab and I have here Vicious. This is actually part of a duology, but I believe the first book wraps up pretty nicely. The main element that to me it's brilliant from Bishwab is that she creates stories that are really creepy and with magic systems that are truly unique. She has this amazing ability and in this case she has written two different characters that are incredibly great. Both have different perspectives, different motivations and I cannot tell you which one it's better or which one it's worse. I just hate and love both almost similarly. It is a very dark story with a very fast pace. It's a little bit more than 300 pages but it reads super fast because it has this event that is supposed to happen and the whole story is told in the way in which our characters are 
are approximating that event. I'm actually a little bit scared of everything that happens in this book. Yes, I can understand it. The premise is that people in this world, if they suffer near-death experiences, they can come up with the powers. And we will follow these two characters that were best friends but now are enemies and they might or might not have powers. It's a fascinating, a dark but really vivid and action-packed read. And we move to a favorite author with a book that is truly a hidden gem with a spider light. So if you go and check this book on Goodreads you will be surprised because not a lot of people have read it and it's just I cannot understand it. This is great if you love journeys if you love quests and if you like this good versus evil this kings of the wilds versus lord of the rings vibe this is just the perfect blend it will have different characters and these characters are different archetypes which i thought was really 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 clever we will have the warrior the wizard the rogue the priest it has a frantic pace each chapter it's a journey a story that will get us closer to this great evil that it's emerging but it also manages to have moments that will really trigger your inner thought and there are pretty reflexive moments fair warning though there's a character that it's a spider he is not a spider for long as he becomes almost a human but if you're a little bit like mm, spiders just bear that into consideration i'm that person and I had no problem at all. Just it is funny, it is dark and it's very very short. I am very intrigued by dark and funny stories. Can you maybe tell us more? Yes, next read I have is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This author is to me being consolidated as the queen of cozy funny fantasy and this book is the best reflection of that. We will have this story that at its core it's a quest but it has some very dark fairy tale vibes blended with hilarious conversations and very unique characters where they are misfits. We will mainly follow the story of this girl that it's a princess, but she does not really believe much in herself. But one day she will realize that her sister is being mistreated by her husband and she will decide to go there, save her and avoid war. And along the way, we will meet different characters that will get together in this great journey. There's also an animal companion which is almost kind of like a bony dog and I absolutely adored it. Just the only thing I was utterly confused by the first 20 pages. So if you started be patient because everything pays off, everything makes sense and I really, really enjoyed it. A self-published book that has lots of good reviews but just it wasn't my favorite, it's Never Die. Now I believe this has great elements, I 100% understand why it is loved so hopefully these things make sense to you and I still consider it as a great short adult fantasy read. With this book we will have also a quest at its core and we will follow this child that has the special power of being able to bring back people from the dead. The great unique thing here is that he has this mission of defeating a great evil and so he will you know, create his own band, his own army. It reads really as a video game. The themes that are explored are really interesting, starting with the death and all the magic that surrounds it. Plus, what does it mean to be a hero in life, in death, afterlife? And the only thing that for me was a little bit of a drawback is that it seemed at times a tiny little bit repetitive, but I really thought it was fast, it was surprising, and everyone praises the twist of this book, which I for one wasn't able to detect. So if you want to join this and let me know what you think, please do. Another great fantasy story is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is acknowledgedly a little bit longer, but not much. And in this case, you have just the perfect blend of being a character-driven story with a plot that has an incredibly high stakes with a dark fairy tale vibe plus a powerful, unique and an independent main female character. It, it's pretty religious heavy and it will mainly discuss themes around the classical Christian religion versus the pagan traditions. So that is the main theme and we'll have our girl that needs to defeat something terrible that it's emerging in this forest and how she will fight 
everyone, everything. I've only read the first book so far, but I cannot wait to continue. And it's honestly beautiful without being incredibly descriptive or purple prose. So just the perfect mix. And getting close to the end, and I swear you're not gonna be able to see which book I have for the last, but now I have Half a Soul. So the perfect mix if you're interested in Fae plus a Regency setting. This story, it's funny, it's cozy, it talks about misfits. Perfect blend, honestly, between character and plot driven. It reads very, very easily and it's the kind of book that it's almost a happy book, so it doesn't have dark themes that just drag you down. So all of this makes it an incredibly short read. We will follow our girl who one day is faced with this fae that wants to rip her soul apart and she manages to keep half of her soul and as a result her emotions are kind of like damned and she does not feel the same things as other people. However, she will learn not so long after that there are children that are falling sick and that something terrible is happening to them and she would like to know more so she will start investigating and the story unfolds from there. It has the right amount of romance plus sweet elements plus hilarious conversations plus a little bit of tension plus a great mystery and I just devoured this book. It is pretty solid read. And last but not least, and let me know down below if you were able to see which book I had here, we have The Dying of Light by George R. R. Martin. Now, this is the first book that he wrote and it definitely leans more towards the sci-fi spectrum, but I still believe that it's a book that will keep great elements for Martin, especially how he is able to craft a world that it's very interesting characters that are neither good nor bad, and also the politics, the scheming that happens. All of that, I think, has a fairly good similarity to what we can find in Game of Thrones. Main difference is there's way more romance follows the story of these different characters that live in a world that it's about to end. It is beautiful and we see how one of these different characters will be called upon and he thinks that everything will be easy and a piece of cake and upon arriving he will find lots of surprises and the story unfolds. It's super easy to read. It was a favorite when I was a teenager. I'm still in love with this book. It has an incredible mark in how I read and what I enjoy and I definitely recommend. Let me and other viewers know what are your recommendations? What are short adult fantasy books that you want to share? I cannot wait to see them.